everybody, this is Anthea West from Dust Bunny Studios and this is a, another series that I'm trying out called Drawing Prompt. Drawing Prompt is pretty much what it says on the tin. I asked for a drawing prompt either on Twitter or over on my Patreon and then whichever one that I like the most I then try to draw into an illustration. Um, someone who knows me quite well when it comes to what I like to draw asked for a a drawing of a forest deer made of moss flowers and vines and that's just pretty much right up my alley so I start up just kind of drawing out I write out what the, the prompt is and then I kind of just do I find some reference so again I'm drawing a deer so I have a reference of a deer and I kind of just sketch out very quickly a little thumbnail of kind of just what I want to do which is kind of the mossy deer just kind of standing at the edge of a lake um, I add I make changes as I go as I usually tend to do I don't when I'm doing these kind of fun illustration drawing prompt thingies I don't tend to do a lot of thumbnailing I try to just I get I get a drawing prompt and if I see an image in my head I just pretty much go for that and just kind of just how how I work I do work with thumbnails when I say when I'm doing uh, comic stuff or when I'm doing something kind of commercial or freelance but when I'm kind of just drawing for myself more or less I do just straight up jump into that so you, as you can see I kind of straight up just I was just drawing a uh, plain old uh, deer but I make changes as I go along um, I actually change uh, I change the face of a deer and I actually <laughs> kind of straight up make it a corpse uh, yeah kind of starts off as oh lovely mystical and then it's like death so the face I later change into a skull and mm, that's just I just feel that's just even more of my uh, uh, aesthetic really you can see here I I before I started going to the skull I was adding it I added in like a flower in where its eye was and that kind of gave me the train of thought of oh let's turn this more into like a dead body maybe this is like an invasive species of plant that's like invaded not invaded a live deer but invaded like a dead corpse and then it's using this body to move around basically so it kind of just grabs what it can maybe it's like a species of vine uh, which has these flowers and maybe the flowers release seeds so it kind of implants itself into a dead body kind of grows and grabs what it can to make itself mobile and then it picks up and just kind of walks off maybe it goes finds a source of water or maybe it goes to find more dead bodies so it can plant seeds thus to create more of itself i don't think of this as like this is not a scary picture i think this is just pure nature doing its thing which is why i like nature nature has Nature is not scary, nature is not evil, it's not bad, it's not horror, it's not whatever. Nature is just as is, it's just nature. And it has those aspects of scariness, but it has an aspect of beauty as well, which is what I was kind of trying to capture with this drawing. Uh, this is just a species that's evolved to do this. And it's beautiful, but also has those scary aspects of it is a walking dead body. So, I don't know. I just really like it. I just really love this kind of concept that I ended up with. Plus, I love drawing moss. If you, like, look at any of my work, I won't make any excuse to draw trees and moss and nature thingies. And that's just pretty much up my gosh darn alley. So... Uh, I really enjoyed drawing this prompt. Um, I ended up, I drew this in Procreate because, as I said, I drew this over the, my shift, and 
and over my uh, security shift and again that's overnight that's off in a different place and I'm not bringing my entire home setup which is a big old uh, he won drawing monitor and screens and pens and blah 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 so this was just drawn on my iPad in Procreate which is a um, which is a drawing program that's like I think it's exclusive to the iPad but like I could be wrong you hope prob you might be able to get on desktop or whatever I don't think so I actually do I actually I'm pretty certain it is it is um, exclusive to the iPad but it's a good little program I actually really fallen in love with it since I've gotten uh, the iPad for like drawing and stuff uh, I do like I tend to I usually like try to stay away from Apple products mainly because if it breaks it costs a lot more money to fix it than it does to replace no yeah yeah and I think that's you know kind of height of capitalism there but uh, I do really do love my iPad. Uh, I bought it especially to be able to draw on the go and to do comics on the go because it has Clip Studio Paint, which is the primary uh, program that I use for drawing comics and stuff like that. And then I fell out in love with Procreate. I got very into drawing more kind of illustrative scenes that are depicting a story. And um, I actually released an art book a good few months ago with a lot of those drawings I did uh, do after getting the iPad and uh, I think it was a great little book you know I was really proud of the of the stuff that's in that little art book um, you if you ever want to check that out there's a link to my Etsy down in the my comment description thingy my bobby if you ever want to check that out so um, as I was drawing this I love doing line art I think line art is my favorite part of drawing obviously I love like the you know you like the sketching and all that blah 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 blah, blah. but I do find that kind of like the hardest part for me because I have to put everything down and all that stuff why is that oh no it's not pausing never mind uh, but like there's a lot more kind of thinking towards it I feel uh, because you're figuring out how you're drawing it you're putting down anatomy blah 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 how do you do all this once you get all that done for me the line art is just I just really like line arting I find it really relaxing I find everything's just already there so I'm just kind of refining and mapping things out and I just I just find it very relaxing I really enjoy it and I really enjoy putting cross hatching and all that malarkey in there uh, and, like, and it's the same in traditional I actually again when I'm doing traditional I still love line arting I love getting my ink brush pen out and just getting those lines down I just really enjoy it so in the drawing here you see that I actually added in fog to kind of add in the mystique, the mysteriousness of this drawing. I do later on kind of regret that I did the kind of a solid form for the fog that I kind of like I drew, I put in line art for the fog. I kind of wish I just kind of kept it completely just. Um, I used like a certain type of brush in Procreate later on when I after the after the coloring section of this video of this uh, process I use a sort of uh, pen to put like kind of extra wispy fog there to make it more mystery or whatever ambiance give it some ambiance I hope that's the word I'm looking for but I do like saying it ambiance ambiance sorry uh <laughs> sorry okay uh yeah so i kind of like kind of later regret putting in the line art and i kind of wish i just kept it with just the brush but i also kind of once i kind of start putting things down i kind of just straight on keep on going with it I rarely go back and change a whole lot of stuff, which 
I know, it's a good thing, but also a real bad thing. It really kind of all depends on the situation. Like, sometimes it's a good thing because it, it, may, it allows me to just kind of keep going. So I'm less likely to get stuck on something or get worried about making it perfect. And I can just barrel on through and get whatever finished. Which, for me, I feel finished will always be better than perfect. Then again, <laughs> it kind of keeps me, I'm bad at like going back and fixing mistakes. If there's an obvious mistake, um, I don't, sometimes I just don't go back and fix it. I just leave it and I just kind of keep on going. Oh, um, we're on the section where I'm coloring it. And I found with a lot of these illustrative drawings I've been doing lately, I've been crying, trying to limit my color palette. And I feel that's really, really helped with how a lot of my better illustrations have looked by limiting, by just finding like a limited color power palette into Google. Like I literally just put in color palette in Google and it comes with a whole, I like a pages of pages of really nice looking color palettes. And I just pick one that catches my eye and then I just, I try to stick with those colors that I see and put them on the drawing and even if they're not like real world colors it doesn't matter it's just about sticking with these colors and just making it look nice uh, yeah so as you can see I picked a very limited color with a lot of uh, greens and oranges and I think it came out really nice I do I do adjust the colors later on when I'm finished so the colors do end up differently it's still kind of within the same realms of the original colors I picked um, but I do fiddle with some of the uh, settings and the uh, uh, color saturations and color whatever in uh, in was it Procreate? yeah I did in Procreate and I think the end result colors look really, really good. Uh, but I wouldn't have gotten to those very end result colors if I hadn't uh, picked these limited colors first. So, you know, say sarah, sarah, you get a, you get what you pay for, which was nothing. Yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> we're coming very close to the end of the drawing as well and I added reflections into the water and I added the color of the as you can see this is this would this is the end result colors here and I think it looks really nice um, oh and this is where I add in the fog um, I have to erase the fog in certain places where I don't want it to give it a to keep it within the spec perspective and make sure the whole thing looks 3d I kind of have to delete <laughs> certain bits of fog here and there to make sure the bits that I want ahead of the fog or the fog being behind certain elements to look like that and I think I ended up with a really good looking illustration at the end there I quite like it I was talking about the water there give it a sense that this creature is within its environment I added the color of the water onto its legs and kind of its underside of its belly play with the opacity there it's basically the reflections of the water reflecting off the body and that helps it you know look like that the creature is interacting within its environment better people who are better at like painting or colors will be able to give you a better idea of how to do that but if you want a real simple way to make your subject look like it's in with its in its uh, environment you just it just it's just an added touch that just ends up making it look a little bit better so this was the drawing that i got from the prompt of deer forest moss vines flowers I uh, made a horrific parasitic plant-like thing that inserts itself into uh, dead bodies and then starts wandering around the place. I like it. Thanks very much for the original prompter. Uh, I really liked this prompt. I really enjoyed drawing this drawing. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more. Check out my Patreon too if you want to see more stuff from me and help me to not have to do other part-time jobs so I can draw and write more. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye!